YouTube, Andrew J here, otherwise known as Andy Scott. Today we're going over pickups. Now pickup making is a science. There are huge amounts of theory that need to be considered if you're going to get into it at that sort of level. But this video is really to give you a better understanding of what it is that you're going out to buy or giving you a better understanding of what pickup might suit your playing or suit your guitar better. So I'm going to be covering passive pickups, active pickups, humbuckers, even a quick reference to blades in there. Now pickups are typically rated by their power output and their tone profile. In other words, what frequencies they pick up stronger than the others. Now output is an output. There's a rating of resistance that the coil has and there's also the rating in millivolts that is actually output from the pickup. It's quite a hard thing to rate or compare with any form of accuracy. So what I'll actually be doing is taking recorded samples of three passive guitars, each with different pickups, and four active guitars, once again, each with different pickups. And then we'll actually look at the wave samples afterwards and see the difference in outputs, the difference in compression, and the difference in sustain, so on and so forth. Now before we get too far into it, let's cover the basics. What is a pickup and how does it work? So fundamentally a pickup is only a couple of different elements. You have the pole pieces or slugs, you have the bobbin around which the coil is wound, and you have its magnet. Now pickups work through a process called inductance. And that's whereby a metal string vibrating in this magnetic environment imparts a current into these coils, which goes through the wire, through your guitar's electrics, and out to the amplifier. So the best way to properly understand this is to pull it apart. So let's do that. Now firstly I'm removing the cap. This exposes the tape which covers the coils. There might also be another insulating piece of tape or copper strip like this. Now I'm removing the magnet. This is a ceramic magnet which is conducting through the pole pieces. Now this is a 6.3k wound single coil. So I'm cutting off the coils now. Now it's unusual for a bobbin to actually have the plastic core inside it. Typically it just exposes the pole pieces. Onto this humbucker. Firstly I'm removing the brass base plate. Now this doesn't conduct the magnetism. Once again you remove the tape to expose the two bobbins. So this humbucker here is effectively two single coils stuck together. The idea is that one runs out of phase of the other to cancel out the hum or noise. This is a ceramic magnet. Note the pickup is grounded to its base plate. This is to reduce noise, but it can also lower the output. You have to remove the pole pieces. Typically these would be screw height adjustable, but this is a cheaper design and they just push through to my surprise. This is roughly a 13.8k humbucker. Now I'm separating the two bobbins here to show that they are two discrete coils and they're not a common winding around both bobbins. Now the different gauge and insulation of the copper wire does affect its ability to pick up the inducted signal. The heavier the gauge, the more able it is to pick up the current and the full spectrum of frequency. Now there are typically two main kinds of magnets used in pickups. That's ceramic and that's alnico. Now with the alnico, there are four main types used in pickups. That's alnico type 2, 3, 5 and 8. Now ceramics have the highest magnetic field or intensity. Alnico 3 is the lowest of these group. Alnico 2 next, alnico 5 afterwards and then alnico 8 which is meant to bridge the gap between alnico and the ceramics in the output. But output's not everything. Ceramics, or the higher output, means that it's more sensitive to picking up every subtle movement which happens. Now Alnico being weaker, they allow a much warmer tone to be absorbed. It doesn't pick up the top end frequencies as well, so you get more of a body. You get uh, a better bass uh, reception. So if I have more winding around my bobbin, or I double the amount of coil, on these bobbins. Does that mean that my pickup is going to be twice as powerful or even twice as good? I guess that would be like me saying if I were to double the size of my wife she would be twice as good or 
saying that our 1.8 litre Corolla should be more powerful than my 1 litre Kawasaki? The answer is, they're not. But the more wire you have, the more potential you have to pick up this inducted current. But if you have a weaker magnet, you're not going to get the same effect out of your coil. Also, we need to consider this base plate. Now this one here is made out of brass. Now brass is not a conductor of magnetism. So it does not allow any continuation of the magnetic field around the sides of the pickups like a steel base plate would. So a steel base plate adds to the magnetism as you can see in these diagrams here. And that basically means you have a larger, more encompassing magnetic field which is able to pick up a lot more frequency in a larger area. Now this obviously affects the sound of the pickup. It adds to the strength of the pickup as well. Okay, these three pickups all have different amount of coil resistances. On the Damasios, they both have ceramic magnets typically linked to a stronger output but they're only 435 and 404 millivolts. Now this is probably going to be linked to the fact that both Damasios are using quite a thin gauge wire and the first one is deliberately overwound so it doesn't pick up the top end as much but has a lot more strength in its base output. They're both running non-magnetic base plates and that's why the JB by Seymour Duncan is really putting out the power. Using 44 gauge wire it's able to extract a lot more of that inductance through the coil and an Alnico 5 which isn't as strong as the ceramics but it's really punching out a high power there. So what's the idea behind these blade or rail pickups? Well there's two things. Firstly they are still a twin coil pickup so they're like a mini humbucker. Now the idea behind them is to be totally spread in their pickup ability so if you bend a string quite aggressively you're not taking it out of its magnetic field like the pole piece pickup. Passive versus active. So what's going on here? Passive, as the name suggests, doesn't actively do anything. It simply exists to provide a magnetic field for the string to vibrate over. Active actively picks up the sound, actively amplifies and actually controls frequency pickup through compression and uh, manipulation of the amplifier circuit. So, let's pull one of these apart. These are actually Chinese fakes. They are not actual EMG81, so I don't feel that bad about cutting them apart. But still, it is made to mimic what the original 81s are. Now the pickup case is sealed in epoxy resin, so I'll start by cutting it out. So the first thing you can see now is that inside that they're entirely wax encapsulated. Now this wax potting is really to keep feedback away and it also seals everything so it doesn't vibrate in sympathy to the string. Now I'll remove the last of the case. Now this exposes the two bobbins and shows that they're a rail type pickup. So I'm simply removing all the residual wax around here to expose the two bobbins. Now you can see that it's a single blade style bobbin in both cases. This is simply to make sure that there's a consistency the whole way across the pickup face. As you can see here, it's simply a normal pickup that's encased inside a wax case sitting on top of a PCB or an amplifying circuit board. Now the first thing I'm going to do now is get a resistance rating for each of the coils. So combined, they have a 10.68K rating, which is consistent with the 10K EMG81. Now surprisingly, these coils just pull apart without any effort. Once again, that shows a cheaper construction. Now I'm simply removing the two blade pieces in here. They're not even glued into position. Now this exposes the ceramic magnet which is underneath. So let's take a close up on this PCB or circuit board. In the middle, that chip or integrated circuit is the entire amplifier unit. On either side, you'll notice there's a small array of resistors and also capacitors. This is how an active pickup controls and compresses bottom end, mid range and top end so it achieves a consistent and a predetermined output. Now before we get into the results, let's consider the control measures that I used to make sure I'm getting a consistent um, output for each of the guitars. Firstly, I use no amp. I run directly through the desk 
and I zero the desk first to make sure there's no compression, no EQ, no effects. I'm using the same pick on every guitar. I'm even using the same battery in each of the active guitars to make sure there's no voltage difference in that output. And finally, I'm using four strums to make sure I'm averaging and getting a consistent strum. Now let's look at these passive stats first. Now the three guitars down the bottom all have different amount of resistance, different amount of outputs, and the ESP I'm even using a single coil just to show a difference between the other two humbuckers. Now let's first look at the Green Soloist. It's the highest output and also has the highest amount of resistance as well. So you can see by its waveform, it has a solid attack. You can see by the transient or the beginning of the waveform that it is really quite high. And it still sustains with a good amount of body. But the high magnetism and the high coil resistance here will actually absorb a bit of the string sustain. Now the Jackson Performer is running a closed humbucker. Now it's still just a standard humbucker, it's just inside a wax pot. The idea behind this is to simply insulate things a bit better. Now it has a much lower coil resistance and a lower output and you can see that that's affecting its waveform as well. Now the ESP, I'm deliberately using single coil, a very low resistance and a very low output which you can expect and this is also reflected by its waveform. You'll notice I've got RMS amplitudes down the bottom. This is the average that's been calculated by the computer of the overall perceived loudness of the four strums. This is really the only way that we can compare these guitars with the active guitars next. Now instantly you can see that these active guitars have a much higher output. Now the first one is using Dragonfire pickups. Now they're a direct copycat of the EMG81s, the loudest guitar out of all of them. I believe it's running an 18 dB preamp in the pickups. It's strong in the bass, mid-range and the treble. You can see that the transient is very high and it sustains, it's quite thick. This means it comes on hard and it stays hard. Now when you look at the Agile beside it, it has eight strings. That's why it has a much higher potential millivolt output. Now this pickup is deliberately voiced to be tighter at the bottom end, so you still get clarity from the F sharp and from the B string. Now quite surprisingly, these waveforms are not as strong as the Dragonfire. Now moving on to the Demon 7, you can see that the waveforms have a lot more body in them. That's because these Duncan Design pickups, which are basically made to model the blackouts, they have quite a solid base and mid-range response. And this is really why you're getting quite a fat and sustaining waveform after the initial attack. Now the Yamaha is running its OEM double stacked single coil actives. Now based on similar EMG and Seymour Duncan, you expect these to be about the 700 to 800 millivolt output. Now its waveform is reflecting that as well. It seems to be fairly comparable with the waveform output of the Jackson Soloist. Now the one thing which is obvious about these guitars with active pickups is they all have a very consistent output. You can see that each of the four waveforms from each guitar are very similar to their other strums and each of their initial attacks are substantially louder than the passives that we saw just before. Now that's also obvious in their tones as well. Now that's really the trademark of active pickups. I guess you could call them one-trick ponies, but they do their one trick really well. So if you enjoyed this, if you got something from it, feel free to subscribe. Make sure you check out my YouTube channel to see all my original music from my other videos. Thanks for watching.